Um, the story went that uh, there I was at Syracuse and I had built a, uh, uh, well, a bunch of costumes and puppets for, for Halloweens and, and various things like that. Uh, and uh, then uh, because they'd heard about me doing some of those, some friends at Syracuse came to me and asked if I'd build a, a plant costume for a plant food commercial that they were doing for a class. And uh, so I figured, sure, sounds like fun. I think I charged them 50 bucks for the materials and, uh, and put together, uh, I guess I, I could show you a picture of the, the, uh, the redo, the uh, reboot that I did a couple uh, Halloweens ago. But um, anyway, uh, the guy doing the announcing for the commercial for the class was Bruce Tufeld. He was a classmate of mine. I mean, same age anyway. He was in the communication school. I was in the art school at Syracuse. His father was visiting him. His father, Dick Tufeld, uh, was a, a voice, a famous voice. He was the voice of the Lost in Space robot. Oh, wow. Remember what he said? Danger, danger, yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, just checking. Uh, and so uh, he came to visit. Uh, Bruce, uh, they were in the control booth when uh, they were shooting the commercial and the director went in and asked him, so what do you think, Mr. Tufeld? Is there a place for me in Hollywood? And he said, no, but there's a place for the guy that made that costume. And I heard about mm -hmm. that a couple of days later at a party and I thought, hmm, wait a second, maybe my life has just changed. Uh, I uh, sent him a letter and a month later I got a, a call of my first trans, you know, cross country phone call. And it was from Dick Tufeld who said, oh yeah, I just found your letter on my desk again. And I wanna say, yeah, I think your uh, work looked really good and I bet you could uh, get a career out of that. Anyway, so I ended up uh, uh, after graduation, I climbed aboard my rocket thumb, crossed the, the country, uh, you know, got on a uh, bunch of rides that took me to Grand Junction, Colorado, and then I, I couldn't get a ride. So I ended up hopping a freight train that took me the rest of the way to California. And, Are you uh, being serious right now? Yeah. That wow. is awesome. You see that in movies a lot, you know, somebody yeah, jumping on a train. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, actually, it was funny. It wasn't what I intended. I, I, uh, I was standing there with my thumb out and I was playing my French horn like hitchhikers do. Uh, but then it was such a hot day, my lips started cracking, drying, and I thought, oh, geez, I can't even do that anymore. So um, I crossed the freeway and, uh, and I happened to see uh, at the cloverleaf, you know, across the cloverleaf, somebody was climbing into a, a truck over there, some hitchers. So I come running across the cloverleaf uh, and uh, and they banged on the roof and said, hey, wait a second. And so I climbed in the back of this orange Toyota pickup truck. Uh, and uh, we're standing in the back riding along into Grand Junction. They say, hey, hi, I'm Chris. And this is so-and-so. And, -so, and uh, where are you going? I said, well, I'm going to California. Uh, but I couldn't get a ride. So I'm going to go to the, the Greyhound station and just buy a ticket. You know, get rid of some of my nest egg. I think I had 300 bucks with me. And it was going to cost 60 just to finish up the ride. So they said, nah, forget that, come with us. Uh, we're going to the freight yards, we're gonna jump a, a hop a freight, we'll show you how. And so they did, we went, we climbed in. It's actually the best way in the world to travel because um, uh, you know they put uh, tracks where they can't put roads and they're, it's the prettiest country around you know you got mountains coming down a desert right there and they just tuck it right in there or maybe it's uh, a the, up in northern california there's one where you go over your train and, uh, you can see yourself coming and going um and uh, then uh, we were beside the feather river coming down <laughs> down towards uh oroville um anyway so i uh, uh one of the the track i mean one of the cars jumped the track and so we screeched to a halt and uh, we we're uh, sitting there waiting and we're filthy because, you know, boxcars are really dirty. And we uh, thought, hey, let's take a, take a bath. We climbed down into the river and cold water and just, you know, we were still clothed. But uh, and there was a tin cup sticking out of this, uh, you know, uh, a pipe sticking out of the side of the uh, mountain and uh, clean, fresh, clear water was 
pouring into it. And so, you know, woo -hoo, it was great. And then, <laughs> and they, um, they brought in a crane car and lifted it back on and we got the rest of the way. Actually, I got to Sacramento and somebody, one of the, one of my fellow bohos said to me, Hey, you don't want to be caught in Stockton because ever since uh, they kicked out the, any of the, the hobos from, from Stockton, because they used to, I guess they were, Stockton was sort of run by the, by the hobos for a while there and they decided to stop that and they hired what they call a bull a cop with a stick to run around and you know look in all the cars and hit people that are there so i got out um in sacramento and went down to the the freeway and stuck out my thumb some more and then i got and i called dick tufel to say hey i'm in town i just thought you know <laughs> that, that is an amazing story uh we, we've learned we learned a lot we learned like this your your journey on uh in the boxcar we learned from mark siegel that he was a clown we learned all kinds yeah. of neat trivia <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm trying to think if there was anybody else um terry ron was around her her uh, husband at the time he's uh uh, uh, Harrison Ray changed his name yeah. to after Harrison Ford came up, you know, because <laughs> he just turned his name around and then, I mean, it was Harrison Ray from Ray Harrison. So it worked pretty well. Yeah. Anyway, we tend to write our names like that on certain forms anyway. But what else would you like to know? <laughs> Matt, take it away. Yeah, so you get to California. Oh, yeah. You're working with Dick Tufeld. Well, I wasn't and, actually not working with him. I, I called him, told him I was in town. He said, oh, that's great. Uh, hey, my cousin is an NFL player and he's in town and we're having dinner. Why don't you come on up to dinner? I thought, okay, great. My first night, uh, July 18th, 1976, uh, went up to dinner at uh, the two fellows house and met them. And I learned some things about, you say, oh, you're in, there's an area. <laughs> They have, they had an apartment. It was on Moore Park. And that was the day that I discovered that crap room is Moore Park spelled backwards. Uh, <laughs> and it actually set my mind to checking and seeing what other things might be, be actually written backwards. I still call Ralph's Schplar just cause I think it sounds better. <laughs> It's fun. Anyway. <laughs> Definitely more fun that way. So I got my I got an apartment actually because Dick's wife Adrienne kind of found somebody that that was renting a place for ninety bucks a month. I think it was is kind of a closet practically. And uh, then Dick stuck his head into uh, uh, the wardrobe department at CBS one day when he was doing some announcements. It was a couple of weeks after I got to town, and uh, and he said, "Hey, I know this guy." Uh, Judy Corbett was running the, the wardrobe department at the time. She said, come on in. So I went and talked to her. They didn't have a job for me, but they had, um, they had a few places I could check. Uh, Judy had a good friend, uh, Kelly Kimball, who was at NBC in the wardrobe department. She was not running the department, but she had her own uh, foam corner of it. So uh, I, I went there and we got along well and uh, she she said, I can't go, oh, what was it? That's right, what do you think? I interviewed with her, we talked, but she didn't have work. But by the time I got home that day, I did get a call, but I had already accepted another job. This, oh, this is a cool part of the story actually that I skipped where I was at CBS. And uh, I, I remember I was hitching everywhere at the time. So uh, uh, she told me, uh, she had NBC's number, but she suggested another place, it was called Fantasy Fair. They made uh, walk around costumes and mascots and things. And it was run by a guy named Tommy O'Neill. And uh, she said, but I don't have Tommy's number. So anyway, oh, well, I guess I'll find it. I went out to the front of CBS, stuck out my thumb, a little red sunbeam, just like Maxwell Smart's car, pulls up. I got a ride with a, uh, a piano tuner. He uh, did the, he 
he tuned the piano at the Hollywood Bowl and various other places. I could probably track down his name, uh, <laughs> but he did have Tommy O'Neill's number. What are the odds of that? <laughs> <laughs> and so I called Tommy and went in and interviewed him and got the job there. And then I got the job from Kelly and I said, I can't take it right now because I just accepted another one. And I worked for Tommy for about a month. And then the day that I told, or he said, I've run out of work for you. So I called Kelly. She said, I don't have any work for you. But then by the time I got home, she said, okay, come in tomorrow. So I wasn't out for a day. <laughs> wow. Um, and uh, we went in and uh, Rick Dees, remember Rick Dees? Uh, radio uh, personality. Remember Disco Duck? No, you're too <laughs> much too young, you, you kids. But anyway, there was a song called Disco Duck and it was it was Rick D's and it was it was a novelty song, you know, disco, disco, duck, wah, wah, ee, ee, wah, wah, ee, ee, kind of a thing. <laughs> and he would perform it for I don't know when and where, but he had a duck head that he wore, but he had this fiberglass duck body and it was horrible. You know, imagine having a fiberglass body form. OK, so your arms go out through sharp edges. Your legs are surrounded by sharp edges. And so um, he wanted a nice soft foam one that he could pack easily, put on easily. And, you know, so uh, so that was my first job at NBC. Actually, um, that kind of relates to the story where buildings stay puffed. Uh, the first one, I don't know if you ever heard that the first suit had a, a little problem that I made it all soft. And when I squished my legs together, it gave it a little uh, feminine feel, like a baby almost. Um, and so I, uh, <clears throat> that wasn't the look they were looking for. Oh. And, uh, and John Berg, had, uh, he'd been hired as a consultant. He worked on Star Trek, I mean, Star Wars, among other things. And, uh, and Richard Edlin knew him. So he brought him in as a, as a, uh, a mind, you know, somebody to, to pick the brain. He actually, I believe he dis, uh, conceived of the belt undoing mechanism that uh, oh. the, the BJ ghost. Okay. Hey, uh, that's and, great to know. So that was, that was one of John's jobs, but he, um, he suggested, well, since uh, we don't want it collapsing between the legs, why don't we uh, make a fiberglass body? And I said, uh, uh, I'll, I'll come up with something. Well, they did make a fiberglass form. And, uh, and I, uh, I tried it and I put it on and it was horrible. Um, and I cut it in half. The idea supposedly was that if the bottom is supported, that's fine. And then the upper half will move with me. But of course there was a line, a delineation line where the, it stopped, but it, it bought me the time to build the, uh, the L200 shell that I made. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with L200. It's, uh, it's a, uh, another foam, not mattress foam, it's stiffer, it's, more like boogie board foam, okay. but, but, but actually where boogie board is, uh, it's like boiled plastic. So the bubbles are, are physical. This, this has a similar consistency, but it's a chemical reaction instead. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um, yeah, I remember uh, John Berg saying, oh, I think you've got a bit of an earwax problem. And uh, it wasn't earwax, it was determination that I wasn't gonna wear a fiberglass shell. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's uh, tying up those two, two ends. What else would you like to know? <laughs> well, like I told you, we've been working with a lot of uh, men and women that you worked with on Ghostbusters. And all of them said that when it comes to the ghost shop, you are the Stay Puffed guy. And we know that you are in the suit and all this and the other, but Steve Johnson says I own Library Ghost and Slimer. Mark Brian Wilson was yeah. Slimer. We know Randy Cook was Terror Dog, but you're Stay Puffed. So yeah, what did that you. look like? What did that look like for you? I know you were in the suit again, but and you just said you helped build it. But okay. what did that look like on a day-to-day -day level? All right. Well, first I'll say what it wasn't. Linda Frobos sculpted the head. Um, so that was her job. 
I don't know if you knew that the reason I knew Linda, I had hired her when I was hired to build still suits for Dune by, uh, at Don Post Company. And uh, so I um, actually, it was funny because first Mark Siegel was hired to sculpt the still suits for Dune. And he told Don, this isn't the right way. We should fabricate them. They just, they'll work better. It'll, you know, it'll be better than trying to cast them up in polyfoam and latex and they'd all be, you know, full of stinky, uh, fresh foam. And well, anyway, he said, uh, this is how you should do it. And so Don called me, I came in and I showed them, I did a, a the first version. Um, and I built a, a neck to, to crotch, um, you know, just, just the, the shirt amount of the still suit and it wasn't even I don't think it was even painted maybe anyway doesn't matter um they used it for the uh, the the screen tests for their three uh favorite Paul Muad'Dibs um and uh, they were Val Kilmer Michael Bean and Kyle McLaughlin well um because it was also the screen test for my still suits, uh, Mark and I were in the in the screening room when David Lynch and Rafaela de Laurentiis were trying to decide who to hire, who to cast as Paul Muad'Dib. And uh, so uh, at one point after we heard, it was just us up front, I guess Don Post was there too, and, uh, and David and Rafi at the back, and they're just arguing about, because I think, see, Kyle was unknown. He was a, uh, a stage actor from Seattle that uh, uh, somehow David had heard about and, and seen, and uh, he'd brought him down. But uh, Val Kilmer was uh, in, the, in the loop in Hollywood and uh, uh, gaining popularity. I believe he did Real Genius that same year, actually. Um, Real Genius. Michael, yeah, I do too. <laughs> Actually, I love him. <laughs> but, um, and I forget what Michael Bean was doing at the time because he hadn't done, I mean, what year was Terminator? 84. Was it? Terminator was 84 too? Yeah. Okay, okay. So they both got work. Okay, I don't feel so bad uh, <laughs> because <laughs> when, when David said, said, uh, what do you guys think? And I said, mm, Michael's too American. Kyle's, I mean, uh, Val's too pretty. Kyle's got something different. To be honest, I didn't say, I don't know if it's good or bad. I just knew that it was making the, the fuzz rise on the back of my neck a little bit. And, you know, it was either because I related to it or because I didn't. But whichever it was, it was something different. And, uh, and it supported David's contention that Kyle was the guy. Anyway, so uh, that's beside the point again. Uh, <laughs> but so um, Linda... I hired Linda to help build still suits. And uh, while we were doing that, I um, also hired Bart Daniels and, uh, and Jerry Goodman, world famous uh, electric violinist. I mean, there were some guys that were really good with their hands that uh, needed some work. So I brought in, brought in friends that I knew could do the job. Linda uh, was really good. She uh, helped organize everything, got us really working as a factory rather than just a a garage full of uh, pieces of foam. And so then uh, her next job, she was hired to sculpt on Ghostbusters. So I was, uh, I had made this uh, weird brain hat. I, I can just show you a picture of it. Um, it was uh, a brain, well, anyway, uh, it was out of foam and Don said, hey, that's a cool idea. Maybe after these still suits are done, stick around and we'll come up with some ideas, which we did. Um, let's see now. Oh, it's, it would be hard. Oh, no, I know how to find it. Wait, it's in the, it's in the puffed album. Anyway, so uh, I stuck around to do some of these hats with uh, Don Post. All right. Here. Yeah. In this image, I don't know. Here, can you see it? There's me wearing the famous t-shirt and the brain hat. 
yeah. kind of hard to tell. Um, <laughs> and uh, so when, uh, oh, and that was Eric Etzico, Mark Tyler, and Bart Daniels in that picture with me. Um, and uh, so I stuck around and made several of these hats. They call them crazy craniums and they cast them up in latex, just like the Don Post mask. And a rubber hat is not really a good idea, but they sold a bunch of them. It kept them out of, out of the you know, bankruptcy that year. So that's nice. Um, and uh, I happened to be at Don's studio de delivering the turkey, the last one that I did. It was, it was of a turkey. And, you know, the, I don't know if people even use that phrase in, or that derogatory term. You're such a turkey. There was a time <laughs> back around then when, <laughs> when that was being used. And so I had, I, uh, had sculpted this turkey hat. I'm delivering it. Phone rings. Don picks it up. He says, oh, yeah, he's right here, here, because Linda called to ask for my number uh, so that they could call. She asked me, if, if you were making a marshmallow man suit, how would you do it? And so I started telling her and she said, you know what, wait, why don't you just come in? And so I went in to interview with Stuart Ziff and Randy Cook and Steve Johnson and got the job. Took that part of the job away from Mark Brian Wilson, I'm afraid. Because uh, he had been told that they thought he would build and wear the suit. But um, when I showed up and all of my resume was foam fab and his was just one piece out of all of his other sculptures, uh, they decided I was the guy. So uh, that's the beginning of it. What else you need to know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, as a sidebar, Bill, now Matt and I both are immediately, once this is over, going to try to track down the brain and turkey hats. You know that, right? Like, oh, okay. <laughs> now that we know All right. Look for, look for crazy craniums. All right. The, the, uh... Well, I, uh, you know, I, I guess this is kind of a sidebar, but talking about, this, you know, the actual stay up and the shooting, like, you know, we've heard the stories about what production was like, but, you know, we wanted to ask, uh, Terry has this really beautiful photo of you and you're in the suit with the hat. Uh, sorry, the head is off and you're reading a book. And the book oh, is like in the suit. So yeah. we we're just wondering, what did you read when you were when you were wearing the state oh, suit? Okay, let's see. It was 84. So it was probably a Dick Francis novel or something like that. It might have been science fiction or or, uh, or or mystery, something like that. I mean, just it had to be something that wasn't gonna really, you know, I mean, that I couldn't put down when I got called, you know. <laughs> And so I had a couple of books inside the the suit. I'd just drop it to the floor, sort of, and it would be down there at the crotch and be ready when I pulled my arms out. Yeah, it, it yeah, sounded like like you guys had a lot of fun uh, on, yeah. that, on that stage. Uh, Marshmallow Hitler uh, is something we've heard a little bit about. <laughs> and... <laughs> that was a picture. Yeah, it was silly, uh, you know. And that wasn't on the stage, actually. That was – Boss Films had uh, several – buildings rented to work out of and uh, that particular one they called it Baja Glencoe it was on Glencoe Avenue and it was this little it was like a ship builder or I mean like a, a boat builder's house or something like that and it had been taken over and it was being used for storage for a lot of the uh, the bits and pieces of projects that they'd done before at Boss including Blade Runner. So when we walked in, there was Tyrell building right in front of us on a table. Um, there was, uh, they had just done a brainstorm, was it? Uh, not brain scan, brainstorm, I think it was. Natalie Wood's last movie with Christopher Walken and Robert Wagner. Uh, I think he was in it anyway. Um, and uh, it was uh, about you know, uh, recording your uh, brain activity and then playing it back. And, you know, as a, uh, uh, well, there was one guy who, uh, who, who put a porn on a loop and, and came to death uh, <laughs> in the story, you know, uh, they, they found him. <laughs> <laughs> 
anyway, but there were uh, there were pieces of film and cables and bits and pieces from previous productions anyway, lying around and stuck to the wall and stuff going on. Um, so there in Baja Glencoe, I, I bought a bunch of foam and it was laid out. Every suit that we made, we, we would take uh, black visqueen plastic, you know, the heavy, heavy black painter's plastic, and we made big envelopes uh, to, to hang the suit in, you know, uh, and just to keep, because, well, here's why, because we didn't paint them. Hmm. This is just raw foam for the body, arms, and legs. The head, hands, and feet were of uh, either, or they were cast, whether uh, foam latex for the head and the hat and the hands, but the feet were uh, latex polyfoam. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Layer of latex, pour in two part. Okay. That was just because the uh, latex was easier to clean uh, down there at foot level. They would tend to get kind of messy. So Diana would frequently be down there uh, scrubbing off my, my feet just from impact with the, the local environment. Let's see. Uh, yes, so what I first did when I arrived, in the first day I made two maquettes. And actually, uh, do you have the Ghostbusters book, The Making of? Yeah, uh, which one? Which uh, one? No, fairly recent, well, yeah. the last. Yeah, it's, uh, the thick one, yeah, the hardcover one. Yeah, we got yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Page page ninety nine. Uh, you open that up and you'll see two maquettes on the uh, on the shelf where I'm working on. Actually, it looks like I'm sculpting the head. I I was sculpting a head so that I get an idea about what I was what I needed to work from. Um, so I did those two maquettes real quick, like a uh, unburnt and a burnt one, uh, and they're not accurate to the suit that we ended up with, but it, it was the first thoughts I applied toward it. And then, and then it was, how are we going to make this? Um, I tried carving the foam uh, for, for an arm piece, you know, uh, one marshmallow carved, sanded, I could only get it so smooth. You can sand foam a lot smoother if you take the time, but it didn't feel like it was going to be time, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, effective anyway, it, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, so I kept thinking thinking it through and finally came up with the, uh, the one seam on the back of each part idea. So they were uh, mostly one inch foam um, that had a zipper or a seam and if it's a back view suit, you turn, uh, put the zipper here. Because we burnt so many of them, by the way, we burnt a lot of suits because there had, except for the hero, there was one hero suit mostly that I wore. Um, and uh, that was for all the blue screen, black screen, the plate shots. Um, and uh, so let's see now. Um, all right, so we would burn each of the suits and they, they had the seam on the uh, off camera side. Uh, and uh, we couldn't cover each suit. So we built a bunch of shells, the L200 shells that then once we knew what the next shot was going to be, we would cover one with a layer of, of the one inch foam. Oh, was it? Maybe it was even half inch for the uh, body. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> no, the, the arms and legs were were out of one inch, but two layers. There was there was a, a bath. I mean, there, there was an inner layer to make sure that it stayed uh, at the proper loft, and then the outer layer. Um, it actually, I put a, uh, we made long needles and pulled a string through the end and uh, gathered it so that around the arms and shoulders and you know legs. Uh, the foam was gathered. Now that kind of wrinkles, but it wrinkles right close to the hole. And then uh, we glued it together until it wasn't wrinkled, you know? Yeah. So out, out yeah. here, out here, it was still smooth, but in here we glued them together. 
and the wrinkles would get lost inside, okay? So we did a lot of that kind of thing. When we covered the body, we would hide the wrinkles and seams underneath the bib and, and the arms. And, you know, you, you, can, you can pull that foam uh, only so far before it eventually starts to wrinkle. But until then, it, it's pretty smooth, as you saw in the movie. Um, and because it was white and they kind of upped the light enough to glare out any, uh, any wrinkles you might have seen, it worked. Steve Johnson and I were in a, a battle throughout because he felt that it had to be sculpted and cast because, because of the wrinkles, it wouldn't be smooth. And uh, actually because the head and the hat were both cast, they had uh, two seams, one on either side. You know, the molds would come apart like that. The hat, it had a single uh, you know, concentric uh, seam so that it could be made the same way. Now the hat band was just a piece of, of flat foam that had been uh, flocked with the Stay Puft logo or name, and I guess it's the logo. And then, uh, and then there's actually a picture of me cutting one apart because I would cut it and rotate the top so that the seam would be parallel to the frame. So you wouldn't see it, mm. and uh, so uh, uh, if it had been the body cast like that, there would have been a big noisy seam down the side. Not that it's so noisy, but everything's supposed to be smooth, and so as soon as it's something, it's everything, you know, <laughs> with that kind yeah. of. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it's amazing. Like you can't see any of the seams. I've never noticed any seams in that movie. They're all That's a hidden. lot of. They're all Amazing. turned around. You're, they're over there or, or over there if the shot's from back there. That's amazing work. That, that's super impressive. So, uh, and I love all the pictures where you're walking down on the miniatures. And uh, so tell me about that a little bit. How, was, was that a multiple day shoot or how, how does that kind of shot work? On the, on the miniature, uh, I was really... We only shot on it, yeah, two days. The first day, well, let me, let me adjust that. It, uh, okay, there's one major shot where I'm just walking down the street, right? And the fire hydrant is, is blasting. So we shot it once without the fire hydrant. And then, uh, and we loved the shot. Richard, uh, we saw it in the screening room. Richard Edlin said, we have a great shot here, but we can afford to do this shot one more time if we can come up with a, a reason. Is there something that can make it even better? And I was thinking fire hydrant, but Pete Gerard, Bryson Gerard now on Facebook, um, he was sitting up front and I, he said, well, we can do a fire hydrant. I could do it out of silica sand so that the, uh, it would be properly miniature. You know, the water droplets would be small because water, has yeah. standard size mm -hmm. droplets. And so uh, in order to miniaturize it, that's what he did. It was salt or something being sprayed through, probably silica sand, like he said, because salt would melt. So uh, if it was humid and, and it would clump. So probably just like he said, silica sand. Um, and uh, so that one we did. Uh, I forget what what else what am I answering now? <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about the length of the shoot. On oh, the okay, set. okay. So we did that shot two uh, consecutive days, or maybe two days during the week. There was also one where it's a shot from above, and I don't remember if we shot it on the same day or if we actually went back on the set for another day, because. And maybe it's the same one. Anyway, <laughs> it's it's one where I lean way back and look up, and that was the that was the worst shot for me. And it wasn't bad. It's just that because now the suit was hot. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean it's all insulation material, and I sweat. Uh, I actually am exothermic, uh, <laughs> and so um, the. Uh, most of the time, because most of the shots were from below, you couldn't see into the neck of the suit. But this one particular shot, 
you could see in. And so I had to put some uh, material in between, so white, I guess, I I'm supposing, just so you couldn't see inside the suit. And so most of the times when I wore the suit, because the suit was flexible and springy, if I waved my arms, oh, and hollow, by the way, that's another important part of this, I would wave my arms and it would act like a bellows and oh. the air would come in and out through the mouth, which was right here. And so I would get fresh air just by waving my arm. As long as I didn't do it too much, because that also generates heat. So, you know, I had to do it judiciously. So because ordinarily I could get it fresh air, but that one day I was closed off. So it was just me inside the head, just breathing and uh, rebreathing. So, um, so in between shots, they would use a hair dryer without the heating element and, uh, and give me some fresh air. Um, but in order to look up, I couldn't lean over back far enough without falling over backwards. So I had to sit on something adjustable. It turned out to be Linda Frobos. She got <laughs> down on her hands and knees and I sat on her back and looked up and, and I was able to you know, frighten the world that way. <laughs> when you know the extra, you know the extra information, it kind of changes yeah. your image of the shot, doesn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, well, it gives me greater appreciation for Linda too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I, I have to ask, too, because we're collectors. Um, yeah. Tom and I, we collect autographs. I've been going nuts on storyboards from John DeCore's collection, you know, stuff that he had from set. So we're going nuts. Did you keep anything from your time on Ghostbusters? Remember that T-shirt? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever see the T-shirt? I saw pictures of it. Yeah. Well, actually, maybe I can show is it here? I have, a, actually, I just want you to see what I do have here, which is, it's from the, uh, oh, there's me. Uh, that was the first suit. There we are, uh, Linda, oh, wow. Ter Terry. Anyway, a bunch of shots of back wow. then. Are these? Uh, this right this here. on your phone? Yeah. Yeah. I, the t I'm wearing the t-shirt there. Yeah. This is the first time you see Stay Puffed behind the buildings, the head is all you see, right? Except mm -hmm. one alley, which was deep enough that as I went by, because it was, uh, they wanted the buildings and the head in focus, I couldn't wear the suit because it put me too far away. So I just wore the t-shirt because of course you're not gonna see it, except it's my own little Easter egg now because uh, it's a commercial for Michelin tires. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's like my mom, uh, you know, the state puff is the love child of the, uh, Michelin man and, and the, uh, Pillsbury Doughboy, right? <laughs> and you still have it to this day. I have actually, I had six of those shirts oh, wow. and, and now I have two and I just turned down a, a couple uh, what, 2,500 for it. Cause I figure I'm, I'm not desperate right now. We'll see. I might, I mean, we'll see if, if he bumps it up any. Yeah. <laughs> I, I told him the price would have to be something that I, to make me sit up and pay attention. And he thought sure. that was, and I didn't think it was because yeah. you know what? I'm, I'm doing okay right now. And so yeah. I, I, I worked a lot during this pandemic. Check out a movie called, it, it won't be out yet, but uh, Bob uh, Kurtzman contacted me in August or so. Maybe that's when I started, but uh, it's called Black Friday. And uh, I built some some wacky plastic bag craziness. You know, it's kind of a, not little shop of horrors quite, but you know, alien uh, crash. Um, and then mm -hmm. uh, the world, world goes bad because of what was on it. Um, and so uh, anyway, so there's the, uh, oh, so I also got, oh, I'll show you. Is it right here? Hang on. Yeah, we just changed everything around here. Now nothing's where I think it's going to be. 
we're envisioning a big Stay Puft collection directly off camera. Um, oh yeah, pretend, pretend. God, I'm surprised. No, it's actually, it's a taxi cab. It's a smooshed taxi cab that I, uh, shit. what did I do with it? Ah, it's around here somewhere. It's, it's in the same place as the t-shirt. Uh, so it's probably, it's probably upstairs yeah. under the bed or something. Uh, anyway, so it, I always keep them in plastic bags, big plastic bags, but uh, um, yeah, I'm surprised it's not right there, but I, I'm sure I knew just what I did with it when I put it away. Uh, <laughs> Um, actually, so, so, so it's, yeah, so it's a squish. Yes, it's that car. Can you, but, will you step on this for me? <laughs> You'd have to heat it up. That's what this one was. They, they heated it with a heat gun and then smooshed it flat. Um, actually, I may even, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Because this is from the, uh, oh, well, actually, it's, it's the storyboard. Oh. Uh oh, Matt's eyes just lit up. I'm, I'm I'm on the hunt now. Yeah, how do we? Huh? We we need that uh, that archive. That's oh, awesome. You got amazing. Oh, okay, actually, these I I snapped off of uh, uh, cleaning up the town. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because uh, uh, Anthony and, and Claire Bueno came and interviewed me, and I showed them uh, uh, everything I had. <laughs> And they took pictures and and actually a lot of these pictures were not what I had but what uh, um, uh, Virgil Morano who was the photographer oh, wait a second here are the there are the cats on yeah. the shelf okay uh, those probably don't exist anymore no of course not they're Roma clay and they yeah. they turned yeah they I'm sure well I don't know somebody might have snatched it. Yeah, now, there's a this, terror dog out there, you know. Well, this is a shot from the uh, from the set. It's a, oh, that's um, cool. so there mm -hmm. are there are the cars, but but actually the one you familiar familiar with the uh, the missing tie story for the bib? Is that what you're talking about? The tie. Um, the first time that Stay Puft is is lit up. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The red ties missing. The red tie story, yeah. And uh, Joe Viscoso leaning against it, uh, and said, "No, no, no, no! Don't put it on. I'll just mess it up." And then we'll get it at them just before we shoot. Well, we didn't. Uh, and I had to go to Michael Gross and say, "Uh oh, you don't want to know this, but uh, I wasn't. No, I didn't put the tie on." And he, uh, he said, "Well, fortunately, it's a." A uh, very complicated shot. So, if uh, um, uh, probably nobody will notice, is what he said. And they, but if, if they do, who do we charge the thirty thousand dollar reshoot to? <laughs> said, him, <laughs> them, somebody. <laughs> oh, recognize me and my friend. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. So, uh, funny story. I didn't say anything to you, but I was in the audience and. <laughs> I was standing outside the Dolby Theater and I was going to cross the street over to the side of the street where um, the El Capitan is and who walks out but Mr. Bill Bryan and you're in that blue shirt and you're standing there and I was like, we had met at this point at a convention. I was like, shit, that's Bill Bryan just standing right there. So I, I had a theory that something was going to happen at Kimmel. Uh, was it cool for you to revisit that uh, and work yeah. on that suit years later? Yeah. You know, we had, we did it in 25 hours. Oh. Wow. All right, consecutive hour. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that was after I left work. I went, uh, fortunately, the shop uh, where uh, we built it was uh, just up the street from where I was working. So um, I was able to get there within 10 minutes. And then, so it was an eight hour day and then 25 hours and then rush it over to uh, El Capitan. So uh, <laughs> it was quite it was quite a day, and it wasn't a perfect suit. The, I was telling you about the in uh, on, in the arm. There's two layers, one yeah. and then another on the outside. Well, on the legs, I ran out of time. I just didn't put the in, inside layer, and so if you see the picture, oh well, here, look at those legs. 
Yeah. Not the perfect because yeah. they weren't filled with an extra layer of foam. So, uh, you know, and, and the designer said, I told you how tall he was. Yeah, but <laughs> you didn't give me an extra hour. <laughs> So uh, did you build it in the same kind of way that you built the one basically, 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 I didn't have the pattern. So we had to just throw together patterns. Um, I had made a head. Um, actually, it was a, it was, <laughs> it was for Halloween. It was old stay puffed. So I had made a, I, I put together an L200 cube and then uh, covered it with a layer of soft uh, one half inch soft foam and then cut wrinkles you know and then put some old uh, some reading glasses on it like you know old old staple <laughs> somewhere in here in this picture of it um, and uh, uh, so I had it it had been from two or three years before so I brought that in uh, we rebuilt um, let's see it had a hat but it was, you know, the, the glued foam was popping loose. So uh, rather than, and foam was getting old and changing colors. So we used fresh foam, but used that hat as the pattern. My son, Toby built the hat and then he took the head and uh, peeled the soft layer off, cut the hole and, uh, and put on a new soft layer and curled it into the into the hole around because Guillermo's whole face had to show. <laughs> and uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> that's how we done it. <laughs> oh, and the only reason we were able to do it. That's right, you were asking about these. What's next out of the bag of wonders? Oh, yes. These are the, the latex hands that I made, they're just, you know, they're just slip latex. Yeah. And, but the, the mold is breaking down over time. I don't know how, how much of this crap you can see. Uh, a lot of, a lot of little nernies, uh, you know, yeah. holes developing in the mold. And so I, uh, I went to, to do it again, to make a new mold. I thought I had it figured out, but it wasn't quite right. And so I'm gonna go back and do it again. What I did was I filled the original, I, well, no, that's right. It's got all the, all the bumps on it. So I pull it out of the mold, take off the seam, uh, grind that down, and then fill it with sand hmm. so that it'll be solid and then take a mold, uh, you know, redo the mold. Uh, I learned from Don Post Studios making those hats that, of course, a one-piece mold is the best, the easiest, but I could never pull a solid piece out of a one piece mold because you know it, it would be too hard i can pull mm -hmm. this out of a one piece mold uh, uh, you know i just reach in and release it from the sides and then eventually it'll it'll just come out but when it's solid it won't come out so by filling it with sand i thought hey this ought to work i can pour out the sand but what i should have done was add some water just a little bit of water to the sand would have made it more rigid. So instead, because it was just loose enough, right at the back here, I ended up with some, some kind of uh, not quite the shape I wanted. You know, it wasn't wasn't rounded like a marshmallow. It was convoluted as if it was empty. <laughs> and so, I'm gonna redo it, but. You know, when you've already used up the time and you can only sell them for so much, <laughs> anyway, it uh, it makes it tricky, right? Uh, yeah, well, let's we, see. Uh, we're definitely interested when you when you recast them. I don't have a set. I, I want one. Definitely. <laughs> All Good. right. I, I know I got to get back to them, but uh, it's you know, last year. I thought I thought I had it. It was such a good idea, and I'm just a step short of it. Anyway. Because the first ones that I did for this, I filled it with polyfoam, two-part polyfoam, which made it great for making a mold on, but pulling it out, I had to go in with, with tweezers and pliers and pull out the polyfoam mm -hmm. bit by bit until I got back to latex and I could yank that up. And that was a pain in the ass, so I didn't want to do it again. <laughs> so um, yeah, if you 
uh, watch uh, what what was that movie I said? Uh, the, the Jackass. No, no. The oh, planning. cleaning up no. the town. Yeah, the town, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, a lot of these pictures I just shot off the screen while that oh, gotcha. was rolling. Oh, here I am uh, turn, twisting the, the hat. I love that mm. shot. Rotating good shot. with Linda Great and Terry. Photo. Yeah, it is a good one. That's Virgil Moran. Or maybe that might have been Mark Tyler took that one. Well, it could have been Virgil or Mark, either of them. Uh, you know, Mark was good about having a camera with him. Nowadays, everybody does, but at the time, nobody. <laughs> or, yeah. or if you did, you got in trouble. You know, <laughs> because, no, no cameras on set. Well, now they can't really stop it hardly. So mm. they, they make people sign NDAs. So anyway, what else you want to know? Well, I, I, here's what I'm curious. <clears throat> I, I, and we don't have to spend too much time on it. But for me, there are certain movies that I absolutely just fills me with nostalgia. And I just fills me with whimsy and wonder. One of them is uh, Star Wars. We talked about John Berg and the original cantina scene when you walk in there. But another film that is like that for me is Men in Black, which I know that was really your baby, right? One of them. I so, mean, I, I did do that one character for it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Do you mind telling us a little bit about Men in Black and what you worked on and, oh, and okay. what that sure. was like? Sure. It was Slug Guy. We called it at the time, but it ended up being called Grouchy, um, which I think um, Barry, see, okay, I built, no, I'm gonna go back a little farther. Um, <laughs> let's see how to describe it. All right, it was for Lord of Illusions, actually. Uh, Steve Johnson said, uh, I need an idea. Go up to your loft and, come up with something, which is kind of a vague, you know, request. But, you know, when you get a request like that, you have to seek inspiration, which I do. I tend to, I went up to my loft and I sought inspiration. And when I have, when I'm full of inspiration, I don't want to just release the inspiration to the room. So I would take a plastic bag and fill it with inspiration, and then tie it. And this particular time, inspired as I was, as I pulled it, it stretched. And I thought, wait a second, I didn't know I could do that. And so I started messing with plastic bags. Hang on. I found that, well, for one thing, if you just grab, pinch, and pull, you can make that happen, okay, just out of a regular plastic bag. And um, if you, I don't know, there are various things you can do along the way if you uh, just give it a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And then maybe, I don't know, a little of this and that. And maybe this. And you get sort of a Stay Puft arm, sort of. Uh, <laughs> I would be so mad because I'm going to use all our garbage bags tonight <laughs> to figure that out. <laughs> now, mom said, don't put a garb a trash bag over your head, right? Well, <laughs> guess what? Actually, for, for Sphere, when we were doing Sphere, we were making jellyfish, and I discovered that you can make thinner domes of, of plastic. Actually, this is a heavier bag, so it's not as thin. But if you take a uh, dryer bag, you know, the old dry cleaner bags, then it starts out really thin and you pull it like that, you end up with a very thin, I mean, right here, it's, it's almost, almost as thin as I'm talking about. 
uh, but the whole thing ends up to be wispy little dome. And then we put this uh, kind of a bell shaped mechanism with a, a string here, a oh, piece of fabric here, tie it there, pull on it there and it makes it go like that, like that. <laughs> and uh, then the dome over it, which has a little hole in it for the string to come through. Uh, the dome kind of bellows and, and the, it fills with water and, and it's awesome. Anyway, um, let me get my glasses back on so I, so I can think again. Um, so for, uh, <laughs> for Men in Black, Rick Baker had the whole job. Actually, <laughs> there's so many elements to these stories. I got to tell you, I was just talking yesterday about Winona's Big Brown Beaver. Do you remember that? Can, you still here? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. You're, you're yeah, muting. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember uh, Winona's Big Brown Beaver by Primus? No? Yes. Okay. Primus, yep. And you remember the cowboy suits that they wore that we made out of L200 and coated with plastic uh, in that video. Well, the, uh, let's see, why am I telling you this? Um, it has to do, with, <laughs> let's see. I tend to do this. I, I start getting fractured in the stories and it's sometimes a little tough to pull the, the tendrils back in so I get the base base body of the of the story. And besides, my girlfriend just drove into the drove into the into the garage. I just heard it open and close. But that's all right. Um, so uh, let's see now. <sighs> How did I get lost on that one? Let me think. <laughs> Why did I tell you about Winona and the beaver? Oh, oh, it's because okay. Even be the design of those clothes was based on some Duracell commercials we had done uh, in the 90s. The Putterman family that were, they had batteries in their backs and um, if, if they, their battery gave out, they would collapse or, you know, uh, Auntie got, put her face into the bowl of Tetrazzini or whatever. Barry Sonnenfeld was directing that commercial. He told us at the time that he was going to work on a new movie called Men in Black. It was uh, really exciting. He told us all about it and it was sounding so cool. And he's telling Steve Johnson. And then he says, and Rick Baker's gonna do it. Oh, well, why'd you tell us? <laughs> oh, Barry likes to gloat. Actually, when he gets his paycheck on, on set on a commercial, he dances around with it like that in front of everybody. You know, I have a house. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so he told us that story. We found out that Men in Black was going to happen, but we weren't going to get the gig. I was doing a lot of work out of Steve Johnson's. Then, uh, while Rick is working on the movie, he says to them, you know, it being an alien movie, shouldn't it have a scene with a lot of aliens in it? Like the, the cantina scene? Oh, yeah, it should. Yeah, get busy and do those. He said, I can't. I've already got too much to do on Men in Black. Partly because he was doing the Edgar Bug practically, which didn't end up being done practically. Well, I mean, they did it, but didn't shoot it. Because as soon as they started trying to shoot it, then, uh, then, uh, uh, sorry, she's in and out of downstairs. Um, uh, Barry said, ah, let's do it digitally. And bam, the whole job was gone. That half. But because Rick thought he had to do it and he was doing all the other uh, aliens that weren't in that scene, he, uh, well, in, in essence, it was like the, the coolest Halloween costume contest that you can imagine. Because all of the different shops in town were asked to do one or two or three of the characters. Uh, K and B did Ed and you know, um, they also, uh, the little scooter critter that was, uh, I don't know, it was sort of like a, a mollusk or a, 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 I'm trying to think of the name of that, that uh, spiny little thing, trilobite looking thing. Anyway, um, uh, we had slug guy, scared guy and uh, jellyfish guy. 
Lenny McDonald was doing jellyfish and it was a lot of layers of different things inside of a tank that was actually full of fluid. Um, and uh, scared guy was the guy with, uh, he had, let's see, a bunch of little roughly things across his nose that opened and closed like that. And, uh, and his eyes, I forget where they were exactly, but they were interesting. The mouth it was all a really cool mechanical creature, little squat kind of the solid guy. And, uh, and there was slug guy. Um, there was this big drawing that Carlos Fuentes had done of all these characters in line. And so it was just kind of, you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. And I was given slug guy and, uh, and given permission by Steve to uh, make it out of baggies. So I did. Um, I spent three months working on the project, inventing ways of working with the plastic bags. Um, I, there were, I mean, it started, the mock-up was actually a, a, a sparklets bottle on top of a stick, you know, but then we uh, um, did, I did a quick sculpture, almost like giant grapes and uh, vacuum formed that. And then two of those made up the head, I guess, something like that. Uh, Carla's here. Uh, <laughs> And then, uh, let's see, uh, there, were, there were little, if you, if you get a chance, I don't know, there's so much that you don't see of the creature <laughs> in that. Uh, I don't know if you remember the moment when uh, uh, Will has just said, uh, hey, you can't be calling me kid anymore because I got the job, I got the skills. And, and uh, Tommy says, as of this moment, your skills meet absolutely dick. And the elevator door opens and we're looking down at the concourse. At that moment, coming around the corner is Slug Guy. You might not notice, but it's galumphing. He's got these big uh, tentacles and they're rolling on sort of like a locomotive kind of a, a mechanism, and, but so much more. Uh, and I'm sitting on this little, uh, almost like a tricycle. It's actually four wheeled, but um, uh, but I I had welded up the frame and designed. There was a, a, a rotating system at the uh, under right behind me. Uh, the vacuum cleaners are supplying air to all these little little transparent hoses that are running down around me. And they're receiving the air at different times and they're twisted so that it's not consecutive, you know, so it feels random and there's two, two at a time. And, oh, there are things up the back. That's right. There were little puckers, a row of them down the back of the slug guy. And each one is, is like this. It's being pulled with a string and it's puckering and the string runs across to its partner on the other side. So when this one opened, it's blown and it pulls the string on this one to close that one. And then this one, you know, they reverse back and forth, but not consecutively, you know, they're just variously lined up. There are also around the head, there were little, little up and down thingies that uh, were also in and out. Uh, and, and activating those was a servo under here that I put a sort of a kidney on it, just so it didn't look like a, a servo arm, you know, so right about there on the head, which is actually way up here. So, uh, and I'm inside, I'm wearing sort of a, a chicken suit in a way. It's just like long, weird shapes. So that I don't look like a person inside this thing. And, uh, you know, so that because it's transparent, so you can see through, so it's got to look like something and it shouldn't look like me. So, uh, <laughs> Um, let's see, what else did I do? <laughs> the problem was that it was noisy. It was, it was powered by um, vacuum cleaners, which were in boxes, in, in padded boxes outside the set. Uh, and the hoses were coming through holes in the wall. Uh, I guess they probably run other hoses through, or cables, I suppose. But um, compressors, and, and vacuum cleaners were activated, inflating the whole thing, plus activating all the little doohickeys here and there. The vacuum cleaners, uh, you know, it's doing all these side to side thingies. And, uh, and meanwhile, I'm just holding on to a piece of PVC stick with a, with a vacuum, vacuum formed, uh, you know, grapes on top, sort of. And, uh, 
it wasn't really difficult. It was, uh, it could, it could go down low in order to get into it. I just get on the floor and slither up into it. And the, the fact that it reached the floor was the sealant, <laughs> you know, there was no zipper or anything. It was just, it, it went to the floor. <laughs> um, I wasn't there at the time, but when Mr. Spielberg came through, he said it was his favorite alien on set. And I kind of, I decided, hey. I decided to take that one to heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely. That's a great compliment. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was a good one. Um, and then it was gone in a day because it was so noisy. Barry didn't want it on his set. So he gave it a line, you know, gave it a character. You know, don't get too close to him. He's grouchy. Uh, you, you'd be grouchy, too, if you'd been, you know, whatever the line <laughs> finished. And, and, you know, they went off and played with the cricket and shot, <laughs> you know. Uh, let's see. Anything else you want to know? Well, since Matt got to ask about Men in Black, I'm going to ask about Army of Darkness because I, I love <laughs> Army of Darkness. Uh, I, I've been a big fan uh, for a very long time. And when I found out you were the pit bitch, uh, I was very, very excited about that. So uh, I, did you ever have you seen my uh, um, my my resume wrap? You wrapped a little bit of that for me in person once. Okay, uh, write, write down Bill Bryan's resume wrap and YouTube. And uh, the thumbnail is of the Hollywood sign. And it's about okay. maybe two minutes long, I think. Anyway, and it's about half my career, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking I should write more verses. But, okay, yeah, the story on, uh, on uh, Army of Darkness. I was... So Yes. Real, real quick, your resume wrap. You, yeah. you do two. You so say you do the resume wrap, and then you have one about. Uh, I did. I met Ernie Hudson. Oh, that's. Uh, oh, yeah, that's my song. Uh, it's actually. It's sort of. I've never been to Spain, by uh, Three Dog Night. Uh, well, actually, Three Dog Night does it, but I think it was. It was one of the cowboy writer Merle Haggard or somebody one of those guys wrote the song well I've never been to Spain but I've been to Oklahoma but the song the my version goes well I never met well I'll first I'll set it up I was in a bar, local bar somebody said did you ever meet Sigourney I said well I never met Sigourney but I did meet Ernie Hudson and I thought oh wait a second I know more of that song <laughs> so I went home and I, I wrote it all out I never um, so I Never met Sigourney, but I did meet Ernie Hudson. I told Ivan I was stay puffed. In effect, he said, so what, son? Between Hudson and so what, son? I'll take Hudson. Uh, I met Murray doing Kimmel didn't turn out like I hoped for. We were supposed to be best friends now, but he never got the memo. Doing Kimmel, got no memo, not best friends now. Um, and Ackroyd don't know me from Adam, but I got to play his icon. Maybe someday selling vodka, I will get to tell him thank you. So uh, played his icon, selling vodka. I'll say thank you. Um, uh, I wish I had met Harold Ramis because he held it all together. Though the others were more famous, his reality was better. Harold Ramis, now he's famous, he was better. Uh, and then uh, um, we were in this, oh, oh. We were in the same production, but in different locations. If they have, uh, oh, 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 never got to bond as castmates, but we shared in its creation. If they have a big reunion, I hope I get an invitation. That's it. <laughs> okay, it's all in here. It's just uh, not necessarily rolling out e evenly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the resume wrap, that one's. Uh, you know, you can see it, but yeah, yeah, we'll Schweizel been a schmello. I mean, been a schmello, been a Schweizel, been a bitch in a pit. So there, there it stands. So, all right, I'll tell you the story about Army of Darkness. That um, I was working on hook carving foam because on Ghostbusters, I got into both SAG and the Sculptors Union because I did both jobs, but I had to join both unions. Um, and I was getting a lot of foam carving jobs through the union. Actually, it was through the union. Well, the first job that I got through the union was for Carlo Rimbaldi for Cat's Eye. So that was cool. Uh, and I worked for Carlo several more times after that. But this particular time, I got asked to come in and carve 
it was weird. On Hook, um, in Kensington Garden in London, part of Hyde Park, there is a statue of Peter Pan uh, up on up on this interesting little obelisk that's made of, uh, it's like rocks, but with rabbits and fairies and mice and things, uh, woodland creatures, okay? And Peter Pan standing on top playing a flute. Well, we recreated that sculpture for the movie. For, there's a scene at the end where Peter wakes up in the snow and um, they open that shot on one of the fairies. It's, it's actually just between his feet at the top of the, of the stand, you know? And uh, for some reason, the sculptors they had hired were not, I don't understand it, but they didn't seem to be able to, to achieve the, these little doll's heads uh, that they wanted. And so when I got there, they asked me to take a piece of, of green foam, cover it with Sculpey, and then sculpt this doll's head so I could make it more precise, more what they were looking for. And I tried for most of that day. And, but I don't know how well you know Sculpey or green Favorite. foam, but imagine you've got green foam here and you rub your thumb across the Sculpey and it comes up and curls off. And now it's just got dust foam on the inside and now it's everywhere and it won't stick back to, anyway, it was horrible. And I kept, trying to make it do what they told me to do. Finally, I kind of, I just took a chunk of foam and carved a quick doll's head, you know? I said, what if it was like this? He said, oh, okay, do it that way. So I made several of these little, little fairy heads for, you know, to match the, the original. They had a great uh, picture board. They'd gone there and just took a whole, whole bunch of shots and it was all on the board, complete wrap around. And so we had good scrap. And so I was able to create those things. So I was, I got a, a pretty good reputation with the, uh, the head sculptor. And then, and then we started carving parts for the boat, you know, for, for Captain Hook's ship. And so I'm making various parts and uh, I don't know, they were getting ready to do another big part of the show. When I get this call from K and B that, uh, they would like me to come in and build background skeleton costumes. Really not much to it, just uh, black, uh, you know, leotard, unitards and uh, L200 bones. I just cut them out really rough, just, you know, bam, 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 stick them on. And it's for those shots from way back. So you got to see white bone against black spandex. And, uh, so I'm making a bunch of those. They also said, oh, could you also do a body for this, this pit bitch? Um, uh, Brent Armstrong had done two different witch heads. One was a, that boogity and one was a regular, you know, kind of uh, old lady crone witch kind of thing. And uh, they had shown, I think they'd shown pictures to Sam Raimi, and, but he, uh, he, he had not decided yet. He, I think he felt that the the boogity one was too comical and he wanted a scare and not a laugh right there. And so uh, I went in, they asked me to come, or what, I was, I was making my skeletons and they uh, asked me to come downstairs, put on the suit so that when uh, Sam could take a look at it and decide if it was in or out. So I put it on. And I'm standing around, he's in a meeting, the meeting's going long. I'm just standing, like, oh wait, there's a piece of plywood there, bring that over here. So I stood on the plywood and pretended to be a mannequin when he walked in until he got right up to me and I went, ah! <laughs> and he said, all right, I love it, he's in it. <laughs> and so I got That's the awesome. gig as well as, and, and they used them both actually, you know, they used the, uh, the old lady and, but I proved to him that it could be scary. Uh, that was the, that uh, discovery right there. And so uh, then when I went on set, to, they, oh, <laughs> there was gonna be some wire work. I don't know if you remember, there was a, a flipping yeah. of that character at one point. Actually, somebody else put it on and, and flipped into the hole because I never went out to the location, yeah. but 
that day on set, Bruce Campbell was there, of course, because he had to cut my hand off, um, <laughs> like you do. And, um, and they were hoisting me up. And before they, they lifted me, you know, they had me strapped into the, into the harness. And they, uh, Bruce said, hey, if there's any trouble with it, if you want to get down, just tell them you're going to throw up. That's what I did. And it worked. Okay, thanks. Good. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm no wuss. Well, it turns out that they had hooked this uh, thing right under my ribs. So mm. I was being lifted by my ribs instead of, you know, by my my hips. And um, and they had picked it too, what, high? No. Yeah, they picked it too high. So my legs were too heavy, so I couldn't spin through. So I couldn't tumble. And I'm trying and trying and I... Yeah, over and over again, and it's digging into my ribs. And finally I said, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> I didn't even really say it like I meant it. But they, okay, down it goes. And I said, obviously I'm not really, but this thing is picked too high and it's and it's laced on too high. So they they released it, dropped it down, tightened it up again, picked it lower so that my legs were lighter than my upper body. And bam, we got it in, uh, we got two shots in two. <laughs> <laughs> so then went into the room into the uh you know they had built this uh, uh the set was was all uh, i guess it was you know two uh, one by twos and uh, and chicken wire and plaster uh, and the floor was covered with uh, plastic up and over a, a little wooden berm you know they so that they could fill it with water it was just you know, just a big swimming pool inside a garage uh, at Intervision in Hollywood. And uh, so they shoved me into a corner and then they staple burlap over the, the niche. And then they cover it with, uh, with moss and crap, you know, and I'm standing in there in, my, in the suit. And uh, I hear Sam come in and Bill Pope and they're all they're lighting. An hour go by and I'm in there. <laughs> and then finally, finally I hear uh, uh, Sam say, uh, "All right then, come out, Monster Bill." And so okay, I guess that's my direction. And uh, and there wasn't any real, you know, here's what I want you to do. He obviously trusted me because uh, he'd given me the job because I obviously knew what to do. <laughs> I scared him that once. And so I figured, okay, I guess that's my deal right here. And so blah, I came out at, at him and got the shot. And then, uh, um, let's see. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's right. Bruce has got the belt around the, uh, the thing, the chain that's going to haul him up. And, uh, and I'm supposed to grab his ankle. And it's funny because I'm a puppeteer. So I look at the monitor to see how it looks. And of course, you know, I'm wearing extra long fingers and they tend to fold up, you know, if you if you grip wrong. So I was keeping an eye on that to make sure that it's looking good. But I guess Bill Pope didn't like the idea that I was looking at his monitor when I was an actor. Uh, <laughs> he said, you're not supposed to be looking at the monitor. Come on, just act, just do it. All right, I'm just trying to protect these things. <laughs> anyway, so we did that. Uh, Oh yeah, he cuts off my hand. That's right, and and throws it up or something. Oh, that's right. yeah, it like flies up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Actually, of course, the thing of reverse gag. Um, from the guy's I'm, I'm gonna have an art show on in May uh, uh, that I mentioned. That and then we were going we to ask about that. Oh, yeah, tell us about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, well, I d had one. Uh, I didn't do one last year. Um, the December before that, I had a show across December. And I had a bunch of paintings in it. I have in the past had paint or uh, art shows with with heads. I'll show you what I mean. This particular one, you know, they're all made from oh. my head cast, but this one is based on a car I once had. It was I called it the Rhino, and uh, um, and uh, in Topanga. California, I uh, drove around and there was a puppet. Uh, oh yeah, uh, I was 
I also I played uh, Puck in Midsummer Night's Dream, and here oh. here I am here I am uh, puppeteering the Roscoe pup, Probosco puppet that's upstairs. Um, wow. That kind of weird, shit, <laughs> strange <laughs> stuff going on. Um, that is so oh, cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, here's my uh, uh, in the back. We got we got the band playing. Uh, you know us hobo musicians <laughs> and, uh, sitting around. Is that me playing harmonica? Yeah, there we go. Uh huh. Okay. So um, <laughs> these are the sorts of things. Uh, I have one that's a VW bus of uh, that's got my head on the front and uh, and then my family inside on a vacation. Oh yeah. Let's see. I think, I think there was one more opening. Oh yeah. I don't know why, but there was that. Um, then, uh, let's see. Then there were a bunch of, um, I had some of them in frames and I, I'm gonna have several of those at the art show. Like one wall that'll have several heads on it. I have a gr an eight foot version of my face. Wow. Pardon me. Pulled from the same, uh, same cast of my head. Um, but um, let's see, can I, can't I, maybe not. Eight feet. <laughs> How yeah, do you get it up to eight feet? That's crazy. <laughs> People say I have a big head. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so swollen. Um, yeah, some of them are paintings. Some of them are are uh, are sculptures. Uh, oh, oh, actually, here's a. How's that? Well, this is funny. I never did. In, I do these albums on my phone. I start with a photo, and then I start the painting, and to make it match you know get as close to the to the photo as possible i'll flip back and forth and, and so um, uh, but i didn't include the last version of this one but see i started with this my hand in the mic and then and then you know start painting it but that's one of the crude versions of it uh didn't get done yet uh, then here's here's one with the uh, uh, again, harmonica. Oh, that's okay, cool. that's so, so cool. Puff, puff playing. Um, then uh, there was oh oh, there's one of Puff paints. I wonder if I can. Oh, was it? It was before. Oh. I got a I got a bad feeling. This art gallery, uh, this art show is going to be a problem for me when I go. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's I love that too. <laughs> well, actually, come to think of it, I am. Um, I'm, I'm going to have an art show on, in May uh, that I mentioned that we're going to... I was going to ask about that. Up. Yeah, tell us about yeah. that. Yeah, um, well, I had one... Uh, I didn't do one last year. Um, the December before that, I had a show across December and I had a bunch of paintings in it. I have in the past had paint, or, uh, art shows with, with heads. I'll show you what I mean. This particular one, you know, they're all made from oh. my head cast, but this one is based on a car I once had. It was, I called it the Rhino. And, uh, um, and uh, in Topanga, California, I uh, drove around and there was a puppet. Uh, oh yeah, uh, I was, I also, I played uh, Puck in Midsummer Night's Dream. And here, oh. here I am, here I am uh, puppeteering the Roscoe pup, Probosco puppet that's upstairs. Um, wow. That kind of weird, shit, <laughs> strange <laughs> stuff going on. Um, that is so oh, cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, here's my. Uh, uh, in the back, we got we got the band playing. Uh, you know, us hobo musicians <laughs> and uh, sitting around. Is that me playing harmonica? Yeah, there we go. Uh huh. Okay, so um, <laughs> these are the sorts of things. Uh, I have one that's a VW bus of uh, that's got my head on the front and uh, and then my family inside on a vacation. Oh yeah, let's see. I think, I think there was one more opening. Oh yeah, I don't know why, but there was that. Um, then uh, let's see. Then there were a bunch of. Um, I had some of them in frames, and I, I'm going to have several of those at the art show. Like one wall that'll have several heads on it. I have a gr an eight foot version of my face. Wow. Pardon me. Pulled from the same, uh, 
same cast of my head. Um, but um, let's see, can I, can't I, maybe not. Maybe eight too feet. <laughs> How do you yeah, get it up a, to eight feet? That's crazy. People say I have <laughs> a big head. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's so swollen. Um, yeah, some of them are painting. Some of them are are uh, are sculptures. Uh, oh, oh, actually, here's a. How's that? Well, oh, this is funny. I never did. You know, I do these albums on my phone. I start with a photo, and then I start the painting, and to make it match. You know, get as close to the to the photo as possible. I'll flip back and forth, and, and so. Um, uh, but I didn't include the last version of this one. But see, I started with this, my hand in the mic, and then, and then, you know, start painting it. But that's one of the crude versions of it. Uh, didn't get done yet. Uh, then here's here's one with the. Uh, uh, again, harmonica. Oh, okay, cool. that's so, so cool. Puff, puff playing. Um, then uh, there was oh oh, there's one of puff paints. I wonder if I can. Oh, was it? It was before. Oh. I got a I got a bad feeling. This art gallery, uh, this art show is going to be a problem for me when I go. <laughs> that's great. I that's love that too. <laughs> so um, anyway, there. Uh, Various paintings of various sorts. You know, I've been doing <clears throat> some some pieces for the Masked Singer as well, and uh, the, uh, um, here's one. Oh, naturally, again, I don't. <clears throat> when I get the uh, the the last version, I, I try to remember to include it in the album, but since I'm not actually still working on it, it's not quite as as important to me. <laughs> but this one. There was the illustration they gave us. And then oh, um, you did the snail. Where I, did you see the snail? Oh yeah, my family <laughs> and I so would there watch it is it every week. Uh, uh, oh cool. Yeah, good. Um, did it reveal? I don't know who was in. Um, you don't know who was in the snail? I'm pretty sure. I didn't make sure. Wasn't it Kermit the Frog? Snail. <laughs> now this is this is beginning the yeti and the making of that ended up. Uh, so there it is, almost done. Uh, but I was doing the fur work and the hands on the yeti, and then uh, and various others are doing other parts on. Um, yeah, Kirby, the problem oh, yeah. is in your snail. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I didn't realize they did that. <laughs> um, let's see. Then there was, uh, uh, where is it? Oh, well, there was an orca, which again, you know, it's not the finish. There's the uh, the drawing and how far it was when I sent him an image of it. Never got the uh, the finale. Then there was, uh, then there was broccoli. Yeah. Broccoli looked like that. And then. Mm -hmm. Then I went through several steps to get it to there. And yep. then uh, uh, actually, it's funny. I'd spent all this time making these little rounded foam shapes. And they they just abandoned that and just stuffed it full of fluff just because it's a little <laughs> too heavy. So, oh, well, so it goes. The seahorse. Awesome. Uh, yeah, there's the seahorse, the drawing. And then uh, somewhere in there, they're making, oh, uh, yeah, there it is painted up. Oh, yeah and some real seahorses to work from anyway so yeah i've been busy i did the popcorn do you remember popcorn yes <laughs> so there there she is and there it is but right here i don't know if, um oh well can't hear it um uh, this is oh probably need to can i nah In there. Yep. Oh. They showed this on the making of a little bit. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to grab one of these, take it over to here. <laughs> you see that subtle switch? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, that's so cool. So, that's awesome. things, that, things they had us do. So, 
<laughs> I was just, if people, if you, those who are listening and watching this want to check out the exhibit, where oh, it's going to be, where right. is it going to be? And it's, when? Called, it's called the Helada, H-E-L-L-A-D-A -L -L -A Gallery or Art Center in Long Beach, California. Um, you can check out helada.usa um, for that's their website for shows and and actually they're selling stuff online um i managed to sell a couple of paintings during the year uh, that was exciting uh, and uh yeah it's on linden street in in long beach and uh, yeah it, it'll be from march 1st through through march last uh and uh then mostly it's weekends i mean they're monday and tuesday i don't think they're open but yeah be worth checking out there uh, the second saturday of each month is the art walk that they have in long beach and of course it's been mostly closed down but they managed to just keep it going enough that uh that now this year um uh, hopefully it'll be enough that everybody will show up and buy a lot <laughs> hey, there, uh... i know this guy hey <laughs> I, <know that> guy. <laughs> I was just looking at the original of that <laughs> is there going to be like uh like an opening uh something there, like there that ceremony <laughs> oh very nice <laughs> well here it is in action the various stages oh yeah <laughs> start from <laughs> See, uh, start. For did, you, did you call that piece sneeze? Is that what? Is that I what think I did it? originally call it sneeze. But there's the the drawing, and then uh, you know, bit by bit, fill in the fill in the parts. I wow. think it actually was a sneeze, but um, I don't know. There's just it's such a weird look on the face. I kind of like. Oh, actually, I'm surrounded by other heads there, though. Um, that one, uh, you know, there's this one that's got wobbly eyes. Oops. Where's my finger? <laughs> I can't find it. Hello, where, where is my finger? Oh, there is my finger. Uh, there, that one. Uh, it's got eyes that are set up on a, on a wire that goes straight back. So when you jolt it, it and, and the jaw does that too. Uh, the one up top is of uh, the, it's a, the red house. These, uh, the, this closes, or I guess the two close to the center, really, no? I forget how it does. Maybe it's that way. <laughs> anyway, um, and uh, I lived in a in a fraternity house in at Syracuse when I went there. And there's there are a few others in the in the image. Uh, it's in my studio. And uh, yeah, there it is. Oh, I might have even just been. It could have been that. <laughs> <I'm not sure>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, there's stuff. Oh, oh, this one here was an interesting one. Uh, so oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing a towel on my head because we were going swimming and I just threw it around that the pic, uh, my girlfriend took the picture and then <clears throat> I liked it and then I um, I printed it on a sweatshirt and it was so cool because the uh, the towel seemed to wrap here like a garment and so my chest is my face it's really weird <laughs> plus the pocket of the sweatshirt uh is my mouth i and so when uh, calling my uh son for well you know we get on on zooms for uh for christmas and my grandson was because my sweatshirt was talking i'm puppeteering my sweatshirt like like you know like this <laughs> yeah anyway you know one cool thing about, about this uh, whole pandemic thing is I, because i'm not the kind of guy that just sits around you know i i haven't been bored and i haven't you know i've, I've been lucky that uh you know i have my girlfriend we're here we're together uh and uh we can you know <clears throat> distract each other from from the worst of it and then uh I don't know. Then we go down to Long Beach, uh, got a condo down there and one up here in Glendale. And so we're able to switch off between 
real lives or or maybe they're both vacation lives whatever <laughs> anyway yeah it's been good uh been lucky and now i'm double back <laughs> oh that's great I'm glad to hear I'm it old. i'm old <laughs> <laughs> i am doing everything i can to try to get it <laughs> yeah yeah well good luck yeah yeah it's worth it takes weight off your shoulders yeah <laughs> why well, uh I, I'm intending on going to your. I'm in San Diego, so I'm going to come out to the, the art the art gallery for sure oh, cool. once that starts. Is there any kind of events, or is it just show up whenever? Kind of well, thing? Um, the opening. There's probably. I'm guessing. Let's see. There will be a a me opening uh, on uh, the first or thereabouts. I, I'm not sure what days or what's. I'll have to look at it. But it uh, actually, I guess my mom's birthday is the 28th, so the first must be uh in the middle of the week or thursday or so um so anyway for uh the saturday will probably be an opening where i'm i'm thinking i might get the band together you know although i haven't been practicing Ooh. enough but you know might make some music and then certainly for the next weekend which is the um second saturday art walk then that's yep. when we expect maybe more attendance and we'll try to be equally obnoxious we want to thank you for your time okay this 30 minute call <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's gone it's gone a little over <laughs> yeah it did but i i enjoyed every bit of it so thank you for your time thank you for the stories thank you for showing me how to use trash bags in a new oh, yeah. way that's going to be important <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah now here, absolutely one, one thing i i neglected to show you with the trash bags is if you Turn it inside out. And let's see, where was that first one? It was over. I should be able to see it here. So, well, anyway, if I tighten it up, everything's going to pop. Is it, oh, oh, it, 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 is it jumping out? Oh, 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 there. I'm not sure where anything is, but you see <laughs> it, it activates, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, That's so cool. I don't know what That's happened awesome. to, the, to the first one. I mean, all right, here, here you got to see. This. There we go. Now. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they going? Right. You're gonna do it. It's like a bagpipe kind of. Where, where are they? Like... Whoa! Anyway, so you see, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's exciting if you you know That's what awesome. to do. <laughs> that and you can so cool. You can do tiny, you know, you can do itsy bitsy little ones. Or uh, relatively large. I mean, that, yeah. that guy was just kids. But, uh, you know, you, Steve Johnson used to like it when I put a whole bunch of those. He called it sculptural. I didn't understand what he meant by sculptural for the longest time. But it's because it, I think it's because it's like you spent a lot of uh, time detailing. I think that's what sculptural means mm. to me. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, things would have lots of little spikes on them. He had a party where I made a bunch of asteroid black balloons. You know, you put a, 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 a you know a helium balloon inside of it to to loft it uh, because it's not that great a seal. You know, here I mean you can fill it with helium and maybe for for a few hours it'll it'll lift. But on, in a with a real balloon inside, there were there were asteroids on the ceiling. It was kind of exciting. Cool. <laughs> that is cool well again thank you so much right. hey my thank pleasure for <laughs> thanks Bill. meeting with us thank you for signing for our group okay cool yep all, all right awesome. then cheers y'all right. take care thank Bill. You. take care all right thanks for the call <laughs>